Today we will discuss the topic recursion. We will discuss the theory of recursion and we will see how we can write a recursive method in Java. Hi, I am Dr. Shahriyar Hussain. In the previous video in this lecture series, we learned how to write methods in Java. A method is a code snippet that you can call an arbitrary number of times from another method. Today, we'll see how we can use a Java method to solve a problem that we could solve using a loop. In mathematics and computer science, recursion refers to a special technique to solve problems that are difficult to program using loops. The main property of recursion is that a recursive function defines itself or at least a part of itself. In a recursive method, we will see that the method is calling itself at some point. Recursion helps solve many complex problems that are difficult to solve using a loop. And at the same time, when solving a portion of the problem is easy to tackle. A recursive method must have two properties. Number one, a base case or a stopping condition. Of course, we do not want our program to run forever. The recursion, that is the calling of itself, must stop at some point. The condition at which the recursion should stop is called the base case. The base case is generally an easy-to-solve sub-problem of the main overarching problem. Number 2. A recursive call. In every call, the method must solve a part of the main problem. When the method calls itself, the call must receive a smaller problem than the problem the current method is handling. Structurally, the smaller problem should have the same properties as the current problem. Only the size of the problem should be smaller in the next call. In particular, we have to make sure that each call is moving the granulated problem toward the base case, which is the terminating condition. Let us discuss this theory using an example. Let us say that we have the following problem in hand. Write all the integer numbers between n and 1. That is, if n is equal to 5, we have to print 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If n is equal to 3, then we have to print 3, 2, 1. We can easily solve this problem without any recursions. We can directly use a loop. Let us solve the problem with a loop first. We will ask the user the value of n. Then we will write a loop that starts the loop variable from n and decreases the value by 1 in each iteration. The execution keeps going inside as long as the value of the loop variable is greater than or equal to 1. That is, the loop terminates when the value of the loop variable becomes smaller than 1. Inside the loop, we have to print the content of the loop variable separated by spaces. After the loop ends, let us write an empty system.out.println statement to make sure that the command prompt appears in the next line after the program outputs are printed. Let us save the program, compile it, and run it. The program is asking for the value of n. The user enters 5. The program prints 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Running it again, the program asks for n. The user enters 10. The program prints all the integer numbers from 10 down to 1. Running the program once again, the program asks for n. The user enters 3. The program prints 3, 2, 
1. Therefore, the program is doing what it is supposed to do. Now, what we will do is we will solve the same problem that is printing n integers from n down to 1 using recursion without using any loop. Let us change the code. We will not use any loop at all. We will use recursion. Instead of the for loop, we will write a method. Let us say that the name of the method is my recurrence. The method my recurrence will accept one parameter only, which is n, the number that the user will provide. Let us write the method header for my recurrence. The return type is void because it does not return anything to the caller. Its job is to print something and hence does not need to send anything back to the caller. After writing void, we write the method name, which is my recurrence. The method will have only one parameter. Let us name the parameter n. This parameter n will hold a copy of the n that the user enters. Recall from the previous video lecture that the header must start with the word static because we will call the method from the main method, which is a static one. As said earlier, in recursion there must be two items, a base case and a recursive call. A base case is a terminating condition. In this case, our terminating condition is when n is less than 1. That means when n is less than 1, we should do nothing but return to the caller because there is nothing else to do. Remember that we have to print up to 1. We do not print anything smaller than 1. We write the base case using an if statement. If we find that n is lesser than 1, we say return. A return statement with an immediate semicolon indicates a return of execution without any value. Given that the method has a void return type, all we can return is the execution without any content. We have a base case now. As discussed earlier, in a recursive method, a part of the whole work will be solved here within the method. The rest of the work, which is smaller in size, will be solved in a different call of the same method. In this particular body of the method, we will solve the problem of printing one number only, which is whatever value came via the parameter. In this case, the parameter is named n, so we will simply print n and then put a space. The space is to make sure that there is a gap between the current number printed and the number we will print next. Now, the task left is printing the rest of the numbers. Let us assume we don't know how to print the rest of the numbers. Again, we have printed n, but we do not know how to print the rest of the numbers, which are n-1, n-2, n-3, so and so forth. If n is equal to 5, we have printed 5. The rest of the numbers that we need to print are 4, 3, 2, and 1. We do not know how to print them, but we have a method, which is the same method, my recurrence, that can print a sequence of numbers down to 1. What we do is we call my recurrence with n minus 1 as the parameter. That is, if n is 5, in the current method we are sending 4 as the parameter for the next call. Notice that when we will send 4, 
the number 4 will be printed and the rest of the numbers smaller than 4 will go for another recursive call. The code is complete. Note again, we have a base case. We solve the problem partially within the method. We send the rest of the problem, that is the smaller subproblem, to the next call. Let us save the program, compile it, and execute it. Like when we used a loop, the program asks for the value of n, the user enters 5, the program prints 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let us run the program again. This time, the user enters 10 as the value of n. The program prints all the numbers between 10 down to 1. When the user enters 3, the program prints 3, 2, 1. Notice that the recursive program outputs the same way the program we wrote using a loop. We just changed the technique to solve the problem. The output is the same. Let us trace this program with a value of n equal to 3. When the user enters 3 as the value of n, the main method calls my recurrence with 3. The execution goes to the method my recurrence with a value 3. Inside my recurrence, the value of the parameter n is now 3. Is 3 smaller than 1? No. Therefore, the execution skips the body of the if statement. Now the program prints the value of n, which is 3 at this point. On the terminal, 3 is printed. Right after 3, a space is also printed. Now we are sending n minus 1, which is 3 minus 1, which is 2. Again in the method my recurrence. We can consider that now we are going to a separate method named my recurrence with parameter 2. Let us write an independent method which looks exactly the same as what my recurrence method we have. From this method, we have moved to this method with a value of 2 as the parameter. We are now inside the method with n equals 2. In the if statement, is 2 smaller than 1? The answer is no. Therefore, the execution will jump to the system.out.print statement. Now 2 is printed on the terminal. A space goes after 2. So far, 3 and 2 are printed on the terminal. Now we call my recurrence again, but with n minus 1. The current value of n is 2. Therefore, we are calling my recurrence with 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. We are inside another my recurrence method, where the parameter n has a value of 1. In the if statement, is 1 smaller than 1? The answer is no. Therefore, the execution jumps to the system.out.print statement. In the print statement, it prints n, which is 1 right now. Hence, 1 is printed on the terminal. Right after 1 is printed, a space is printed as well. The space will not be recognized if nothing else is printed in this line. After printing 1, we call my recurrence with n minus 1. In this method, n is equal to 1. Therefore, n minus 1 is 0. We go to another my recurrence method with the value 0. Inside this call of the method my recurrence, n is equal to 0. In the if statement, 
n is smaller than 1 is a true statement because 0 is smaller than 1 is true. Therefore, we go inside the if statement. Inside the body of the if statement, we have just a return statement. That is, we are now inside the base case where n is smaller than 1. This return statement takes us to its color, leaving the rest of the code of this method for this call unexecuted. We return to the color. When we return to the color, we return to the point from where we left the color method. In the color method, n is equal to 1. After returning, the method with n equals 0 is not accessible anymore. We are now in the method my recurrence with n equals 1. In this method, we do not have anything else left to do. Therefore, we return to its color right after where we left the color method. We have returned to the color method that was responsible for printing 2. After returning to the method with n equals 2, the method with n equals 1 is not accessible anymore. We do not have anything else to do in this method where n is equal to 2. Therefore, we return to the color method where n is equal to 3. After returning, the called method with n equals 2 is not accessible anymore. We do not have anything else to do in this method with n equals 3. Therefore, we return to its color method, which is the main method. After returning to the main method, we just have a system.out.println statement left. After executing this print line statement, there will be a new line on the terminal. As a result, the comment prompt will appear in the next line on the terminal after the termination of the program. As a quick bonus teaser program, let us discuss the solution of another problem which is relevant to the one that we have discussed today. Using recursion, write all the integer numbers between 1 and n. That is, if n is equal to 5, we have to print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If n equals 3, then we have to print 1, 2, 3. Notice that in the previous program, we wrote all the numbers in reverse order. When n was 5, we printed 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now we are saying print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How can we change the program to print everything in order? In the previous problem, we first printed n, and then using another recursion, we printed all the numbers from n minus 1 down to 1. Now, when we go inside the recursive method, we cannot print anything before printing the rest of the numbers. That is, when n is 5, we have to wait till all the other numbers 4, 3, 2, 1 are printed. When n is 4, we have to wait till all the numbers 3, 2, 1 are printed. When n is 3, we have to wait till all the numbers 2 and 1 are printed, so and so forth. We can accomplish this by switching these two lines. We will go to recursion without printing n. In the recursion, the rest of the numbers are processed first. Then we use this system.out.print statement to print n. n is larger than any of the other numbers. Therefore, n will be printed last. The smaller numbers will be attempted for a print earlier than a larger number. If we save this file, compile it, and run the program, we will see that the program is printing all the numbers between 1 to n in ascending order. 
I suggest that you trace this program using pen and paper, just like I did using the previous code to print numbers in reverse order. Tracing your code using paper and pencil helps develop an understanding of how the logic of a program works. You might think, why on earth we have solved this simple problem using recursion? The answer is, we have used this simple problem to explain how recursion works. In practice, recursion is used for problems that are hard to code using loops. There are problems for which it is easier to write a recursive solution than writing a loop-based solution. In games, where it is required to keep track of the status of a game board or in artificial intelligence where it is required to foresee possible changes, recursion is used because it automatically saves the local variables in each call. In the associated web page on competingforall.com, we'll provide some exercise problems that you can solve using recursion. If you liked this video, please give a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed to competingforall.com or to this YouTube channel, please do so to receive notifications on our new articles and videos. Hope to see you soon in another video. Thank you.